Hey, Huda Nation, and welcome back to the film room where today we're going to take a look at Jalen Smith, a pretty big name as far as names getting picked up in August are concerned. And with New Orleans Saints surprisingly using more base defense to start this preseason, uh, they're about 26% against uh, the Chargers and 28% against KC, or maybe have those flipped. But either way, 26% or more base defense in the first half by the starters against KC and against the Chargers. Pretty interesting. Now, if Jalen's going to make this roster, and obviously he's had a pretty nice career, even if he's had an injury history, which with the Dallas Cowboys, he's probably going to be floating as that outside linebacker who rotates in. And if New Orleans ends up using more of this base as they're looking in camp and preseason, well, certainly going to need a guy like Jalen Smith if he's playing well. And is he playing well? Well, good news. That's what the Saints film room is for. It's why you're here. <laughs> I'm lame, I know. It's okay. I can be goofy and know what I'm talking about at the same time. All right, so this first play we're going to look at with Jalen is going to be a little zone drop and a read attack situation. For those who want to identify him, it's going to be right here. Simple way. He only got them long dreads. Real easy to spot for our linebackers. So let's go ahead and play this one at full speed. You will see him playing off towards that left side. Pretty normal alignment for him. Going to drop in the zone. Then the quick recognition. That's what we call click and close. And that's what we call, God damn, that hit had to hurt. Whoa. You ever feel like there's some karate sound effects that need to get inserted? Watch as he absolutely waylays this poor running back. That man has a family, but he might not. After this one, because that's kill shot. Put the KO on the screen. Let's talk about what it does, what it means, and why I like it. So the quick thing is, how does he look when he drops into his short zone coverage? I think in this game, he looks pretty solid. He doesn't look Demario Davis level, you know, reading every edge of his zone, adapting to everything. But in terms of initial traits you look for, one thing that you look for is the ability called in diagnose and click and close so the ability to read the field their football intelligence and then after that how quickly can you physically react because look you can read a field pretty daggum well hey i think that's me but that doesn't mean you're qualified to hop into the nfl and make a move that's not me but it is jalen so look at this click and close here pretty nice little reaction speed and we'll watch in full speed one more time late in the wood so recognize this throw coming one thing i love about it one <laughs> In today's NFL, this ain't one of the best tackles. Oh my, what? I'm, I'm literally leaving the screen. I was adjusting my lighting. But look at this, great tackle. But more importantly, watch as he's doing it. He doesn't just rush to this. He doesn't just give away his zone. He trails to the bottom half of his applied zone. So he's in his zone. Now remember, he stops again. Look, I want to verify the ball's coming out. He is sticking to his integrity. He's doing a good job here. I know he's kind of cut off of the screen, but now he's going to come back, bam, lay the wood. Love it. That is a great play from a short zone to stop a offensive play trying to get a first down when he's going through the check down. That is a fantastic defense. Anyway, next play. So this one's going to have a little bit of a good locked up coverage. I like this one. Before anybody says anything about this play, because I know what's going to happen. Y'all are going to see that man had hands on like, oh, it's pass interference. Oh, it's holding. Actually, Karen, the way that it works in the NFL, you can touch a receiver slash tight end. But you cannot make any type of move that impedes their progress or doesn't allow them to make a football move. So he can put his hands on and make sure they're there all the time. This is actually a very good move by a veteran player. What you're doing is simply having that hand on the back. You're trying to make sure that you know where he is as you're scanning the field and reading other things. It's another way to have great situational awareness. So look at his eyes on this play. Look at how he reacts to that tight end coming to him. Hands on, but where are the eyes? He's not impeding anything, no jersey tugging. He's just got hands on, but he's locked up. He's ready to make a PBU, and he's staring down the quarterback. Where's that ball going to go? Right there. Bam. All right, let's get out of there. Great play. Little things like that. I don't trust Jalen Smith to cover uh, you know, a slot receiver up a nine route, but what I will say is a couple reps you've seen here, the ability to have that short drop and have good situational and spatial awareness is a positive. And if you're New Orleans truly looking for a third linebacker for when you're going to run those base runs, I'm not trying to throw guys like you know, uh, Bone and Nephi Sewell, et cetera, under the bus. I am just saying that that's a nice rep from a short zone pass defense perspective and also show some good technique, no holding, but making conscious of where that receiver is while scanning the quarterback's eyes. I like that. 
Hey, Saints fans, real quick, if you want to support the channel, check out our merch store. Link in the description below. It's RevDeuce.com. But check out the Saints podcast section where you can get coolest shirts, coolest cups, coolest hats. Oh, and that hat have you all ready for Easter. Look how crispy it is in the white on white. Support your channel, support film studies, support your podcast. RevDeuce.com. Thank you. One thing I love to talk about is fundamentally sound football. We've actually talked about how the Saints have had to really get better at fundamentally sound football this year. And aside from the 22 penalties in two games, which is absolutely abysmal New Orleans, one thing you're going to like about this one is Jalen playing fundamentally sound. So you're going to have an outside run here. I'm going to diagram it first because as we're coming out, one thing you're going to have is pullers. And when you have pulling guards and tackles, obviously you're trying to capture the edge, which... Now, for those who remember the gap system, you've got the A gap, you got the B gap, C gap, and D. And they're trying to get out here. Why? Because space and speed equals lots of yards sometimes. So as a linebacker, how you play this is a couple things you need to be looking for. One, you want to have good gap integrity. Two, you need to know whose responsibility is for each individual gap. And three, you want to force those guys and gals back inside. Yes, you want to make them change direction so if the running back wants to go here you want to make him cut back inside so i'm gonna let you play this one free and then y'all can kind of see do you think jalen does this let's watch it together snaps coming there it is there you go look how that is a i mean granted you don't want all the extra like missed tackles but we're talking about jalen smith's job that's exactly what you want him to do comes in maintains gap knows that he doesn't have outside that outside is going to be the corners responsibility but he does want to take on this offensive lineman i love how he does it though he's going to hit him inside to inside and he's doing that because he wants to push him momentum him out he doesn't have the outside gap he's trying to guard this one got the trails trails fills and then the corner of the outside so he's going to take on this lineman a lot of times you're like well shouldn't he go after the running back no he needs to clear the lane maintaining where his responsibility and gap is so that he can trust his guys to make a play. Now, you would hope that the starters of Demario Davis, Cameron Jordan, Kalen Saunders, etc., don't let this guy bounce out, you know, 10 yards running up north. But in terms of fundamental football, Jalen Smith purposely takes himself out of the play, essentially, to do the right thing. Take on that incoming lineman, take on that puller, and make sure you fill the gap so that they force them back inside. He could have tried to slip underneath and maybe go after a shoestring tackle. But here's the thing. If he tries to slip this offensive lineman and go after his feet, well, we're still going outside. But instead, by attacking the outside and, and going with that lineman and pushing him back into the running back's path, forces the running back to cut inside. Great fundamental play that'll never show up on a box score. That's the type of thing that I really enjoyed seeing from Jalen in this game. I really don't know how to describe this rep except calling it fun, hilarious, man just wants to play football. Two notes. One, once you pay attention that we are in a nickel set here. Nickel being a 4-2 alignment. So four down linemen, two linebackers with Jalen Smith being our end man on the line of scrimmage here on the backside. And then we've got Tano Passignon as the end man over here on our front side. But I just love the, the tenacity this guy plays with. So watch this rep. It's going kind of like a little funny, goofy bunny hop at the end of it, but I love what he's doing. Don't like my man Peyton Turner kind of getting um, thrown down with almost a snatch technique. But anyway, let's watch it. So, yeah, I don't know if it's a turf thing, if he gets his foot stepped on. But anyway, let's talk about fundamental football again. Fundamentals, couple things we're going to see. One, Tano, great job. Your job here, Tano, is to read this handoff and make sure you don't allow a bounce out. Opposite side, going with gap integrity. And one thing I really got reinforced going through Jalen Smith's tape is he's going to do his job, not necessarily try to make a big play, but he will give a big hit. He will try to make a play when possible. This is exactly what I want to see. He is setting the edge. Again, what do we talk about? Force it back inside. Why do we want it inside? Because that is where all of our people are. My safeties are there. My other linebackers are there. We don't want to give them the edge. As Alex Gibbs, famous offensive line coach, used to say, Corners can't tackle for shit. So, knowing that, we want to make sure we force that running back back inside. We don't want him to have space. We want him to go into that mass of bodies and hope that our guys are going to win. So, what do you have here is exactly that. He gets upfield just enough to contain that edge. Love the hand swipe there to get rid of that offensive lineman. And then a little weird bunny hop to go put our hands on the running back for the tackle. So, 
Really good, just fundamentally sound play. Engage. Love this, man. He's replaying. Look, when a 330-pound man comes and punches you, you're going to move. That's simple physics, baby. Do y'all remember that Newton guy? That's going to happen. But look how he reacts. Replants. Gets that single arm out there so he can lock out. Make sure he creates distance. But he is dominating his gap. This is what he wants to do. Lyman wants to turn him out, but he's got to have control. He never lets him get that. Love the hand usage. And what's greater than that, the hand usage is coming when he's not even paying attention. He's watching the running back. And then he is swiping the hands from the tackle at the same time. Now he's a backside player, essentially. He comes back to get into the fight, but he was critical in helping make sure that that stayed inside. So this resulted in the short gain that it did. Again, just fundamentally sound football. It's nothing crazy, but it's the little things he's doing well. Left tackle comes in. Big old shove. Cool. I'm going to replant. I'm going to solidify my gap. And then I'm going to get rid of your hands while I'm not even paying attention to you. Attacking that elbow right there to get that arm out the way. And then we're going to go engage. Just good fundamental football. So this one, you're going to have a little bit of a switch here. Lante Taylor's going to come back down to the downside. You have Smith rotate over to the top. He's got a great PBU on a critical third and five. Love this play. So one, one thing you notice if you go through all the all 22 of this game is Smith does a lot of chatter, as in he communicates with his teammates pretty well, which is great considering how new to he is here. Now, I don't expect him to have picked up Saints playbook already, but he comes over, swaps over to the stack side, and this is a tricky thing to defend on a short yardage situation if you're a defender. These stacked routes can go anywhere and creates a natural rub that you got to worry about. So he does a good job of avoiding it, letting that uh, point guy clear out, and now we're going to react and attack this out route. And he does it aggressively. He gets on top of the shoulder immediately, and you see as soon as he matches hip to hip, arm is around PBU. Beautiful. Now let's watch it from another angle. This is just really good. Shows that he still has enough athletic ability to be a you know force. Uh, force maybe not the right word for going through 20 snaps, but certainly showing the athletic ability that he still has enough to compete, dominate, defend in the flats. And I just love this right here. Look at his positioning, getting in, attacking the hands of the receiver. And again, remember we talked about that early rep we looked at, you know, about the second rep of this video. Not getting pass interference. His hands are on only to make sure that he's aware of the positioning, but he's playing the man, ends up doing a great job playing the ball. That's a third down, and he's excited. Like, I don't know. Look, I'm getting a little bit too in love here, but the fact that this man is this excited in a preseason game, like this is preseason. This doesn't even go on the record, but it's preseason. Go try it right now. You're watching this channel. Go try to look up preseason stats for anybody from 1999. Hard to find, isn't it? Because nobody's excited about preseason except Jalen Smith. Kudos to Jalen. I mean, this dude came to really show that he deserves to have a spot on this roster. We'll see if that ends up being the case, but thumbs up for me on these plays. Okay, so we have another run defense play, and again, great fundamental football. We talked about a few different things. You're going to see his hand usage here, fitting the gap, the key and diagnose, all those things. So let's talk about a few things first. I'm going to go slow with it. So at the snap, how does he know when the pull happens? The right here, the pinch hasn't even been made. He's already running. Now, you might think, well, does this mean that he's guessing? No. How does he know? Goes back to understanding fundamentals. He's reading the lineman. When you got a guard and a center pulling, they ain't doing that for a pass play, honey. They ain't trying to go Hail Mary right over into the hole and hit you in a Tampa 2 zone, an empty spot. No. This is about to be a pitch play to the left. So we got to get to our spot first. What does he do? Bam. Number one, why is he planting here? Because you see a lot of this happen, especially with, you know, mid-tier linebackers, or even, you know, high school, college, they'll overextend, and they'll get locked out out here. Remember what I talked about earlier in the show? This guy's job is that gap. Gap integrity. Where do you need to be? He fills his spot. Now, again, credit to Malcolm Roach, by the way, who had a fantastic uh, job. He just gets rid of the left tackle. He's trying to down block him, and he makes a great play on this one. I mean, this technically should be in his gap. He does a great job. Malcolm Roach did fantastic in this game. But you see Jalen Smith, good fundamentals. We want to make sure he forces back inside. Why? He's a real big, scary guy like Malcolm Roach. But it's not over yet. Watch this. This is Will Clapp coming up and pulling on him. Boop. Oh, you see a little hand usage? Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. You've seen several plays. Some of y'all get really excited like the Trevor uh, Penning pancakes. He had three pancakes in this game, by the way, Trevor Penning did. But 
I get excited with some of this just good fundamental linebacker play. Just he's not even to pay attention. He doesn't have to just eagle eye focus on the offensive lineman coming to him to miss him. He's gonna slip him and then hands right there. Bloop. Plant. He's back in the hole already. That's good play. Now, was it perfect? No. I would say that you'd like that plant and then insert like a real quick jab back in it. And maybe this goes back to his injury history. I don't know enough about Jalen Smith to say. But I will say, in terms of team football, he is playing really good team football in this rep. He's going to understand his assignment, understand the gap, whose role is where, fill it in. You can't get much prettier than that. Malcolm Roach does his job. Jalen Smith does his job. Everybody does their job. Bradley Roby, for the most part, does his job, considering he's going against a 300-pound lineman. That freaking hurts. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, back to a pass rep. And this one, I just want to show some good zone integrity, as in we know where our spot is. Don't leave it until you have to. Here's what I mean by that. All right, so you just watch it in full. So at the, obviously, he's got that short middle zone, right? He's right there. He's kind of spying the quarterback. Now, as soon as the quarterback rears and lifts that shoulder, the natural tendency might be to bolt, and we want to attack that area. But he's got to remember that his job, whether he's spying or whether he actually is in charge of the full zone. It's not his job to leave this area. So instead of over committing, plants. All right, we didn't see the ball out. We haven't left our zone. Let's reset. Because what you have to understand when you're doing zone, especially if you have a breakdown like this, where you have now entered in the scramble drill if you're the charger. So the quarterback is now within the scramble drill. He's buying time, and now receivers are kind of running freelance. You have to understand that had he left his zone, that receiver is coming right underneath because a receiver is taught you play towards your quarterback and back. So this receiver, should he notice, is going to play backwards towards the sideline. This receiver is going to be crossing, getting closer. This receiver that you just saw is going to curl in. Scramble drill receiver, you got to work towards your quarterback. So if he had left his spot, he's not going to be here to defend that middle zone. And he's not going to be able to do this. Help chase down the quarterback, make a tackle before the first down. So just fundamental football. I know I'm not showing anybody anything crazy. There's not fumble recoveries here. This isn't interceptions. This isn't crazy sacks. Just playing this position as it needs to be played. And I guess I just appreciate that. Let's go watch another. So New Orleans is going to line up everybody on the line right here, linebackers and D linemen themselves, and you're going to have the infamous, we love it, we remember Rex Ryan and Rob Ryan. Please come back to us. Apparently, we're going to drop our two defensive tackles into coverage. <laughs> uh, laugh, but it worked, right? Like it, it did. I can't critique it too much. But oh my God, why the hell is Ryan Breezy in the short song? Okay, I'm sorry. Look, this has been happening in the NFL since 3-4 Okies and stuff was a thing. Shout out to the Ryan system. <laughs> but Tano passing is going to get a PBU here at the D-line. It is some good uh, penetration here. What ends up basically happening, you're going to have the linebackers rush in with the ends, leaving the A-gaps empty. So you, you're basically making it to where the center and the guard have nothing to do, or at least trying, and you're hoping the ends get the extra pressure because you've given them one-on-one. -on -one. So you see one-on-one -on -one here. This, uh, left, uh, the right tackle apparently decides that Smith is more important than Passignon, who gets a free run. You're trying to give your outside guys one-on-ones, and then you're you're leaking these guys underneath, hoping the quarterback doesn't notice them. It makes me laugh every time. But in terms of what Jalen Smith does, his responsibility is simple. He wants to create a one-on-one -on -one for his guy to his left. Obviously, he wants to get a pass rush, but he's going to attack the outside shoulder right there of the guard. See how he's moving down? He's not necessarily trying to get a sack. He's just trying to move everybody with him. It's the same idea if you're running a twist in the stunt. So he's going to attack the outside shoulder of the guard, dragging the tackle with him. Creates either a one-on-one -on -one by the tackle having to reverse or gives a free run and beautiful play. Ends up being a PBU. Works great, and you did have a decent positioning of a Zach Bond up there at the top. So, again, just understanding your job, understanding your role. He breaks off immediately and is just kind of staring at the quarterback of, do I need to chase him? Do I not? So, nothing here amazing. None of this tape makes me go, yo, 20 snaps in. I'm convinced he's an all-pro for New Orleans. But I will say I appreciate the fundamentally good play. I appreciate the snaps that we did see of him, and I definitely am intrigued enough to want to see a lot more. And he's enough to where... I don't have him on my 53-man roster, but he's penciled in. He's somebody we're paying attention to. 
Should he have a good week? And should he have a good third game? Certainly could be somebody you see making this roster. But those are some of the plays we looked at so far. Okay, so I hope you all enjoyed the Jalen Smith film study like I did. Again, if you want to support the channel, check out the merch. I'm actually wearing the podcast merch and hat right now just because, well, we've got to record a show. So thank you for watching this video. Smash it with the like button. Let me know if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about because I tell you all the time, I'm happy to go through the DMs and join the Discord. Great place to ask. We're on Twitter. Great place to ask. But yeah. Comment down below if you have any questions about what we talked about today and what more you might like to see this week as we go through the tape of the New Orleans Saints taking on the Chargers. Y'all are amazing. Who that? God bless. We'll catch you on the next one. Deuces. That's me. I'm out.